It's still January, and three smartphone companies have already released flagship devices housing Qualcomm's latest 5 nanometer chipset, the Snapdragon 888. But how do these devices, more importantly, how does the new Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra stack up against the world's first two smartphones to incorporate 5 nanometer tech in their chipsets, namely the Kirin 9000 and A14 Bionic run Huawei Mate 40 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max respectively in not one, not two, but three different benchmark runs where we will test out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling, score, and frames per second. All devices have been updated to their latest available software updates, and we're rocking Android 11 on the three phones on the left, Android 10 on the Huawei, and iOS 14.3 on the iPhone. Other than all these devices running on five nanometer process node technology when it comes to the CPU, they are all kitted with LPDDR5 RAM, aside from the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is paired up with LPDDR4. XRAM. All devices here except for the iPhone are kitted with UFS 3.1 storage while the iPhone has a snappy NVMe. We have 120 hertz refresh rates on the Samsung Xiaomi and iQ but only 90 hertz on the Huawei and a lackluster 60 hertz panel on the iPhone. The iQ is stuck to Full HD plus 1080p resolution so we're gonna match that with the Samsung and the Xiaomi and the Huawei. The iPhone sits somewhere between Full HD and WQHD and it cannot be changed. We have enabled focus on performance mode within game launcher on the S21 Ultra, max performance within Game Turbo on the Xiaomi, monster mode and ultra game mode on the iQ7, performance mode and game space on the Huawei, and there are unfortunately no performance mode options within the iPhone. Not that it really needs it. All Android phones will be running the same Antutu version 8.5.3, while the latest for iOS is 8.3.7. All devices will be going through Geekbench 5.2.5 and 3 d Mark Wildlife version 1. Do the new New Snapdragon 888 powered smartphones have what it takes to go up against the trustworthy Kirin 9000 or the absolute beast A14 Bionic. We'll have to wait and see. This is Technic and without further ado, let's go. First things first, let's check out the battery percentages at the start. We will compare this at the end of the test. We're also going to be using an infrared heat gun to measure heat dissipation within every interval, I guess you could say, after every benchmark that we run. These are the current stats at the bottom. I'll keep them at the bottom as we run through the test. So far, the coolest is the Samsung and the hottest is the Xiaomi. That's pretty much just from me setting up the phones before actually running the test. Like I said, at the bottom of the screen, we do have the start temperature in degrees and Celsius. I'll then plug it in after Antutu, after Geekbench, after 3D Mark and see if any throttling is going to be happening. So far, everything looks good when it comes to all devices here. Everything is nice and smooth. What you would expect, all of these devices are over $700, so you would definitely expect it. The Samsung is pretty expensive. The most expensive device here is the Huawei. Unfortunately, no Google services for that one. The Xiaomi Mi 11 and the iQ7 are the cheapest here and still rocking Snapdragon 888 chipsets. They're all doing a fantastic job in the heaviest part, the third part of Antutu version 8 here, which is the Terracotta Soldiers. I can't see any stutteriness really or any lag. Snapdragon 865 smartphones were sitting around 15 frames per second. We'll get to FPS later when we hit 3D Mark Wildlife. But as of right now, it's probably sitting between 25 and 30 on the Android devices. Probably a little more than that on the iPhone. I'll definitely have to do another FPS test within Antutu itself in the near future, so stay tuned for that one. Also be having a detailed battery drain test going up pretty much later this week, so stay tuned for that one. Super excited about that. I really wanna see the performance of the S21 Ultra. We're gonna to move to the end of Antutu. We are now finished and let's test out the temperatures in degrees Celsius. The Samsung added 13.4. We added 13.1 on the Xiaomi and we only added 4.6 degrees in Celsius to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. We're now gonna go into Geekbench version 5.2.5. I'm gonna speed through this, but talking about those temps again, the Huawei got the hottest at 51.6 and the iPhone the coolest at 37.6. iPhone coolest once more after running Geekbench here with 39.1 degrees in Celsius, but it added the most at 1.5. The Xiaomi lost 0.8 degrees in Celsius. That makes me feel like there was some thermal throttling going on there. We'll have to see when we get to the results at the end of the video, so stick with me here. We're now in 3D Mark here. This is the wildlife portion of it. This is not the stress test of wildlife. This is just the one minute version, just to get an idea of the FPS. I will post the FPS results after this, as well as the minimum FPS and maximum FPS, but so far the iPhone is sitting at pretty much between 
49, 50, and 60 FPS, where the Xiaomi and the Samsung and the iQ are hovering around 35. So let's see what happens there with the Huawei doing slightly better than those. Like I said, we'll get to the results. Let's first get to the temps and the overall total temperature of all of these devices after we had run through 18 minutes of benchmarks. That is how I worked out the milliamp hour per minute reading for battery as well. But first, let's talk about temps. With that last benchmark run, we only added one degree in Celsius to the Xiaomi. Was it throttling again? I'm not too sure. The artist was the Samsung adding 3.5. The Samsung added a total of 17.7 .7 degrees in Celsius, though the Xiaomi still ended off as the hottest device and the iPhone still ended off as the coolest device. When it comes to battery drain, you need to remember the Samsung has the largest battery with 5,000 milliamps and the iPhone has the smallest with 3,687 with the iQ in the middle of those at 4,000. So even though the iQ is the second smallest, it does have the worst battery drain over here, but that is because it has such a tiny battery, which is why it's milliamp hour per minute reading isn't the worst. The Samsung has the same milliamp hour per minute reading as the iQ at 22.2, even though it had less battery drain in terms of percentage, but that is because it has a larger battery. The Xiaomi Mi 11 is between those two and it hit the worst 23 milliamp hours per minute drain over here and the best milliamp hour per minute reading is of course the iPhone with 16.4 which is absolutely phenomenal and 2-2 benchmark results first place here not surprised at all the Vivo iQ7 is an absolute monster with monster mode and ultra game mode 730,000 points there the Xiaomi Mi 11 in second place though it didn't score as high as I've seen before from the Mi 11 Third was the Mate 40 Pro, just under the 700,000 mark. Fourth, the new Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. I do have the Snapdragon version of the phone, by the way. Also quite a bit lower than the Huawei. And in fifth place, lower than the lot here, is the iPhone 12 Pro Max. When it comes to single core Geekbench 5 results, first place, no surprise here, the iPhone 12 Pro Max pretty much dominates when it comes to the CPU department. Single core of 1586. The next best in second place is the iQ with a massive drop down to 1143. Third is the Samsung, fourth is the Huawei, the Xiaomi a lot lower. I usually see it around where you're seeing the Samsung and iQ at the moment, but it's definitely getting throttled here. It's 753 points on single core. This is one of the reasons reasons why the device actually dropped in degrees Celsius by 0.8 after the Geekbench run is because the phone was trying to cool itself down so it wasn't allowing you to utilize the full performance of the CPU chipset. It's very similar here when it comes to multi-core with the iPhone being on top with 4149 massive drop down to second place of the iQ with 3695. This time the Huawei and the Samsung have flipped around with the Huawei placing third here, Samsung placing fourth, Mi 11 once again thermal throttling over here it's a lot lower than its other two Snapdragon 888 brothers so you can definitely sense something is going wrong in this department probably because the phone was just getting way too hot last but not least 3D Mark Wildlife first place once again iPhone 12 Pro Max with a score of 8280 this is the biggest jump down to second place that we've seen out of these three benchmark tests second place the Huawei surprisingly enough with 6541 here and then it goes down to the iQ7 Pretty much reverse order here. Fourth place is the Xiaomi and dead last is the Samsung, though not much of a difference between the Samsung and the Xiaomi and a little bit of a difference between the iQ7 and those two with the iPhone hitting 49 frames per second, the Samsung hitting 33 frames per second, which is the worst. All the Snapdragon 888 powered smartphones here sitting around the same 33, 34 FPS. The Huawei did a pretty good job at almost 40 FPS, but almost 50 on the iPhone is literally unbeatable with a max FPS here of 60. The next best max FPS was the Huawei with 51 and the lowest max FPS was the Xiaomi with 41 FPS. Wow, that was strange. So the Xiaomi that usually does the best when it comes to Antutu was beaten by the iQ7, but those two devices were far from first place when it comes to the iPhone taking the crown and Geekbench and 3D Mark. Nevertheless, all of them still did pretty well. I can say I'm slightly disappointed with the two devices on the left. Pretty impressed with the iQ, considering it's the cheapest phone on the table here. Huawei is the most expensive and it did average. The iPhone, of course, is top dog over here with that wonderful A14 Bionic and superb optimizations within iOS's software. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video as much as I did making it. A sub to the channel would be phenomenal. This is Technic and I'll see you in the next one.